Chapter 15, Viewing and Reporting Project Status. We have our project created, we have it saved as a baseline, and the work has started. Now we want to make sure that we're keeping on track. So we have some tools that will help us determine which, which tasks were started or completed late. We can look at the task costs at our summary and detail levels. We can look at the resource costs and variance. And then we're using custom fields to create a stoplight view that illustrates each task cost variance. That's a tool that's available in project to make it easy to convey to others that are on the team what's going on. And when we look at variance, a lot of times people think of that as being something bad because generally our project's overdue it's running late, it's over budget. But it could be we're under budget or we're ahead of time. So we want to know what's happening and you want to start right away looking at these things because if things are off, I think you'll always have some kind of variance, but if they're off by much, you're going to look and see what can I do to get them back on track. We'll go to project. And here I've already done it, but if you go to Gantt, you can go to the tracking Gantt and it shows you, oh, look, we didn't start on time. These tasks are getting off track. We can also apply the detail Gantt. So we can go to our Gantt, our Gantt chart and we can go and look for other views or more views and we can look for the detail Gantt. And we want to look at where we can see what's going on and you get more details. It's showing you how much it's off by. Uh, we can apply the variance table to a task view to see the number of days of variance. And to do this, we can go to our view. And we want more views or other views. And we can look at the uh, variance. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, let's go back. We need to go to tables and look at variance. And now here's our variance. So you can see here's the variance that, that start and the finish. And at the moment, we're 20 days over. So that's not good. That's almost three weeks. So we do want to do that. Uh, and we could also filter so that we just so, show what's the delayed. And actually, in this, we're off in the beginning. So it's going to show every, or pretty much in the beginning. So it's going to show everything else. But here we can go to filter and we can look for. incomplete tasks. Is that what I want to do? Oh, slipped or late. So I need to go to more filters and see all the filters we've got that we could use. And here we go, slipped or late. And it's not going to show you much because guess what? There, there's quite a few that have gotten late. Because once we got off, we're not getting back on. So now we could look at our statistics. This is a quick look to have a go. We can go project, project information, go to statistics. And here we can see we have the current days, the baseline, the actual, the remaining. And up here, we have the dates and the finish dates, and here we are 
20, just over 20 days over time. Not good. We can see how much work we've got. We can also see the cost. So a quick look, we can see how, how we are doing. So now we're going to go to our view and on the view we want to look for our tracking Gantt. So here's our tracking Gantt and you can see what's going on. So uh, let's go to the Zoom group and let's have a little bit shorter. So if we make it instead of days, let's make it weeks. And now we can see more at a glance. And we wanted us to look at 33. Here's this one. And we can see, go back to our task so we can scroll to the task so we can see what's going on. And you can see uh, where we've gotten off track. So you can see the red is the critical path we have to get done. So you can see where it's currently scheduled way over here and here's where it's actually at at this point in time. So we could focus on only the slipping tasks. So let's go to view and we're in the data and we want to go to our filter and we want to go and see uh, more filters and we're looking just for uh, and they're all, these filters have already been created for us to help us with what we need to do. So, and we're going to just look for slipping tasks. And it's not going to do too much for us because we know, and then I can just say apply. And it's showing all of the ones that are slipping. And of course, we got started off, so it pushes everything out. So, if we want to get the word out on page 329, it tells us how we can print the project overview report. We can go to uh, dashboards. We haven't done much with the reports yet. We will later. If you go and look at your dashboard, and we just want to, with our dashboard and project overview, Okay, there we go. And you can see at a glance. And this is great when you're trying to communicate with people. Do they want all the little nitty gritty detail or do they need to know at a glance what's going on? So we can, if you have Excel or Visio, you can print a status focus visual report and it shows you how to do this. We actually get into reports further on in a later chapter, I believe it's chapter 20. We can copy the project data to other applications. So we could go back and we could do, uh, let's go to tasks, let's just go to our Gantt chart and then in copy, we have copy picture. You could zoom it in more so they can see immediately and you could then paste it, we've done that before. We can export the data to other formats. You can create a PDF file from this. You can also create an XPS document, which is a document that you can easily print. It's relatively easy to print it. And if you have uh, web access, uh, you can do SharePoint and things like that. And you can look at Appendix C to find out how to do that. We really don't get into it in this class because we don't have it set up for, for that. Sometimes you might not have the filter you want, so you can make your own. 
so you can do whatever you need to to get the data out there but most of it has already been uh, developed for you but every project is unique so you may have unique requirements so you could set up your own okay we want to look at task costs so we're going to go to view and we're going to go to tables and we're going to click cost now see the table on the right is normally the end. the table on the left is by default entry but if we want to do something else we can bring in those main tables or we even have more but we want to look at cost and when we get cost you can see what we've got with the cost and the variance here so we're looking at the cost and so you can see the current total cost the the fixed cost the total cost what was on the baseline what's the variance what's the actual and what's the remaining so you can see all of those to help you now we want to go to our view tab we're there already and we want to look at the outline so here's our data here's our outline and we just want to look at level one and see this gives you a quick look at where we're at and what we're doing and how things are happening so you can see uh, our later our later um, tasks haven't even begun so we don't have the different but we can see where we're at so an easy quick glance with using the level or an outline now on the view we want to click outline and then all subtasks so on our view we want outline and we want all subtasks now we have a bit more data and so it shows you more of what's going on so on our view we want to go to more filters whoops we had that still slipping maybe we should have had no filter and now let's go and we want to look for more filters and we want to look at cost over budget so look at all these things that we could look at and we only get to see just a little bit in this class but when you have a project you can have a look and see what can I find that will be helpful for me and we apply that and so uh, we can see uh, what is cost over budget at this point in time and when we're through with it we can just go back to our filter and say no filter and we're back to that so there's additional tips on how you can work with that cost data and I'll let you read through those on page 332 and you can do them for yourselves they're pretty straightforward now we're going to look at we've been looking at the tasks how about the resources we're going to look at the resource costs so we're going to uh, we're on view and we want to look at under our resource views the resource sheet and this gives us our resource sheet and on our view in the data group we want to look at tables and we want cost so here it gives us our cost and we can see uh, if the, where there is variance and how much of a variance there is we want to click in the cost here is our click down here 
and we want to sort it from the largest to the smallest. So we can see, oh, uh, who is was spending the most, how much the variance. Actually, Harry was spending more, but his variance is 3,000, whereas the copy editors were spending less, but there's a bigger variance. Maybe we have a problem here. So you can look at that to see. So now let's go in our variance. So rather than us look at, we'll let the variance do it, and we want to go sort largest to smallest. So now we can see who has got the biggest variance. And we can examine that to see what can we do. So now we can go on our view and say sort and click by ID. And that will just put us back where we started. So, you know, you can do that if you want to go back to where you started from. So, you can use the cost overview report to see re resources over budget. So, we could go to the report. We can go to view. Re in the view reports group, which is all these reports here, click dashboards. And then we want cost overview. And look at that. So you can see what's going on. You've got some charts and some graphs here. So you can see what is happening. And these, these dashboard 